Hey, everybody. So two weeks ago, we met with uh, Peter and Joe from the Gaia.ai team. And uh, I wanted to bring in Dahl Winters today, uh, who is another entrepreneur uh, who started a, a company that went through the Launchpad Accelerator. Uh, and, and just to kick us off, um, you know, Dahl, uh, you know, can you tell us a little about uh, who, who are you and, and why do you do carbon removal? Well, hi everyone, I'm Dahl Winters and I'm a CTO of Deep Science Limited. Uh, I do carbon removal because I've already exhausted every other option that I can take to reduce my carbon emissions uh, that I can feasibly take. I have solar on my house. I eat like hardly any meat. I hardly ever drive. I don't have kids by choice and I need, still need to do something about the climate. And so I'm, um, you can see I'm a female uh, small business owner, uh, minority, and uh, I'm, I'm all for environmental justice, all for um, renewables, and I'm not so much for fossil fuels. Uh, and I, I want to do something to, uh, to help out. And so I've been doing this on my own for the last two years, um, carbon dioxide removal on a small scale. And uh, I'm really glad to be able to share that with you today. So we were just having a really interesting conversation about public perception and carbon removal. And uh, this is something that uh, you've recently gotten really exposed to uh, mm -hmm. kind of the, the, the wider world of what's happening, not yes. just with the industry and within the industry, but, but externally. Uh, and just to, just to kick us off, I mean, we've, we've talked about this for a little bit, like in, in your words, what is it that uh, other people working in carbon removal need to know about the experience that you've been having this this week. Like when you think about um, one of the launchpad sessions, right? Like what is it that the teams there need to know? Yes. So my experience this week, I had um, uh, a meeting, a uh, town hall meeting with a lot of people um, who basically did not know um, um, the difference between CBR and carbon dioxide, um, CCUS essentially, carbon dioxide utilization and storage. Um, there's a lot of misinformation going around, and I think that we need to come together to actually understand the facts. And as a Launchpad team member um, early on, uh, I was able to see a number of different companies enter the space. And I can tell you these companies, these are small companies now, they're seeking to grow. They have nothing to do with um, um, anything harmful, fossil fuels, or, uh, or you know, they, they're not big industry, they're hoping to be because we need big industry to make a change uh, in the, our direction. But uh, it, it's definitely uh, what I've experienced this week has been uh, an eye opener for me in terms of um, the need to come together, uh, various groups to come together to address the climate crisis productively. Got it. So if, uh, if I'm starting a company today in mm -hmm. carbon removal, um, you're saying that there's there's kind of some 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 other things I need to be paying attention to uh, outside of just kind of the the the, the business and, and technology aspects of uh, of what I'm working on. Yes, precisely. Uh, the things that we should be looking at. Um, we, we all look at our business because we're business people. We all look at the technology, but what about the effects on people, environmental justice? Uh, what about the effects on uh, the environment, like the entire life cycle? We, we probably do life cycle analyses at some stage, but we also have to look at uh, manufacturing, disposal, um, how people actually get the materials to you, transportation. Uh, those are all key things that you have to look at initially because without a good technical economic analysis, um, as I encountered early on in my launch pad uh, travels, uh, you can definitely change your focus. It will change your focus of uh, where you're headed very quickly. Um, so you need to be, you need to start with the science, but you also need to incorporate the human element into what you're doing as well. Yeah, that's really powerful. Um, can you speak more to you know your experience kind of outside of the uh, the, the air miners ecosystem, the carbon removal ecosystem? Um, you know, yeah, what is the? Can you talk more about the the public perception mm -hmm. of 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 carbon? Of uh, not even sure of what. Can you talk about the you know what you saw? <laughs> Yes. So I was with a number of uh, open air collective team members and a uh, and, and variety of people who were who are also for direct air capture, for carbon removal. Um, the public perception is largely mixed right now. Uh, we have people who are for 
um, bills and legislate, legislative actions like the Carbon Dioxide Removal Leadership Act. Um, we also have people who are against it for various reasons. And those reasons all have to do with just the belief that the industry is bad, that uh, we're all connected with fossil fuel industries. Um, that, that's really not true. I mean, I, I'm not, I've never been funded in my life by a fossil fuel industry member. Uh, I, I, I'm all doing this because I am a, um, I feel like I'm on a grassroots level and I share the sentiment that a lot of people have on um, wanting to do something about climate change. And so I really, um, I, I really felt like um, this week, knowing about carbon removal and what the public perception is, that we kind of need to open up a dialogue um, and, and, and show people that who we are really um, in, in a public forum. Do you have a sense for kind of the, the common ground there in terms of, um, yeah, what, what, what can we agree on or what, what, you know, what's the, what's the, what's in common there that. that oh, there, there's wanting? a lot. There is a lot we can agree on. And that's where I was dismayed to know that there's, there's such a divide between our groups because we actually have like a lot in common. We, we all want a better future for ourselves and our children. We all want a cleaner environment. We all want to work together and build a more peaceful and uh, just society. Um, what we are disagreeing on right now is just the actual method of getting there. But I can definitely see that we need to open up the conversation because that helps us make progress. We're going to need all of us to work together because this problem is so massive uh, that nobody, no individual can solve it alone. There's no one climate solution. Uh, that's why we have, we need to encourage a spread of lots of companies, lots of organizations to, uh, to work on this problem. Is it, is it that there's just a different solution that's, that's, in, that's, uh, that's in mind? Is that, is that the difference? Is there's kind of, you know, it's, it's a common goal, it sounds like, mm -hmm. but different, a different pathway to get there. And, and this idea yeah. that there's a, a heavy industry, uh, component, is there an is there an alternative path that that seems like it's uh, that seems promising? Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, so we're a deep science pioneering uh, an approach that we like to call carbon dioxide 2.0, removal 2.0. And it basically is a combination of the technological and the biological aspects of carbon removal. Uh, we're, we're blending together uh, an approach that, making an approach where we're using a, a sorbent tile, which is um, basically like very small scale, uh, removes carbon very quickly. And uh, uh, it's, it's biodegradable, it's non-toxic, no chemicals, uh, safe to um, even play around with at home. Um, so it, it's something that addresses the needs of many of those on the environmentalist groups who are saying that this is a dirty industry. Uh, it's not an industry at all. You can do it from your house. Uh, it, it's not a big enterprise, but it will be big in effect if a lot of people contribute to it. Uh, it is something that, you know, it's not going to be harmful or toxic. Um, it's not going to have problems with environmental justice because look, look at who's doing it. Uh, these are grassroots people who are engaged in this. And so, um, so yeah, I just think that we, we are trying to set a new example for what carbon dioxide removal could be. Um, but we need all approaches on the table. We need to see and fund those approaches to see which ones perform better and, and go from there. You, just tailing off that, can you talk a bit about like, why is it worth having these conversations, right? Like, why can't we just kind of keep, you know, keep doing our thing and, and just kind of leave it at, leave it at that? Like why, you know, why poke our heads up and kind of go talk yeah. to other humans? <laughs> <laughs> because we've been doing it our way for so long and that's what's gotten into us into this mess um we we have um basically the status quo the direction of business as usual has not worked and will not work um, we, we, we need to get people on board because people feel like if they have a voice, they'll be more likely to buy into a solution. And a lot of people feel like they don't have a voice. Right now, the environmentalists who are against the bills like CDRLA feel like they don't have a voice. And so consequently, they shut down the voices of people who are in support of the bill. Um, we, we really need to come together and encourage dialogue and open discussion and, and help each other um, do something about climate change. 
Yeah, thanks for talking with me about this, Dal. It's uh, definitely learning a lot. Um, it's something where, at least, you know, for my my role in air miners, a lot of the time, I'm I'm just you know talking to founders, talking to people buying carbon, talking to people that already kind of get carbon rule and 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 uh, and in, in the same way that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, you know, it's interesting to hear your, your kind of your proposal to other teams, uh, other people working in carbon rule is, hey, you know, we should we should uh, start figuring out how to connect this more broadly to uh, some of the other, you know, other needs, other interests um, of everybody around the world, and how to how to kind of make that make that happen. Um, do you have any suggestions for people that are that are you know, you know, if I'm, if I'm a founder, if I'm a scientist, I'm a uh, designer working in carbon removal. What, uh, yeah, what can I do to to uh, to to start creating more of that that dialogue? Well, the most important thing in terms of creating a dialogue is being the one willing to listen. Uh, in Air Miners Launchpad, one thing that I learned a lot about was customer discovery. Um, basically, just opening yourself up to hearing what the customer or potential customer has to say is the number one thing I can think of to actually get that dialogue rolling. Uh, You have to be willing to accept criticism, to accept feedback, uh, to accept uh, another point of view, and then try to bridge that gap between yourself and that other person, because then they might be your best ally in the fight against climate change. They could be a customer of yours in the future. Um, they, they could definitely help you out in other ways. So to get that dialogue open, just be willing to listen. So one final question, just to kind of bring it back to where we started, which is, you know, Thinking about being a you know a founder, or a scientist, a designer working on a, a solution for carbon removal, sometimes this public perception stuff can seem like it's it's somebody else's problem, right? Like, well, they just don't get carbon removal. Uh, but you know, the point of this discussion that we're having is that this is something that's that that teams working in carbon removal are affected by, uh, mm-hmm. are impacted by. Um, can we talk about that a bit? Like, what's you know, what is the impact if I'm you know I'm working on a new uh biochar system why do i care about the like what are the what are the impacts of a of negative public perception around carbon rule if, if everybody hates carbon rule and they think it's a uh you know leads to a bad future like mm-hmm. what how does that affect me as a founder it sounds yeah you know what's yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. yeah. There, there there is uh there there is only one outcome to negative public perception and that is the ultimate failure of your business uh you don't have an opportunity basically if people are not wanting to really to support what you're doing uh you get negative press negative uh customers negative uh, uh feedback and basically there's like no future for your company so you really have to pay attention to the message that you're putting out there as a founder as an air miners member, as a, a member of the carbon removal community, to make sure that it's well received. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a big challenge. I'm curious if there's other teams out there who have kind of interact or like worked on this or, or felt it in their meetings with the venture capitalist. If somebody mm-hmm. comes in and says, "Hey, I think this is actually creating a uh, you know a, a, this this is extending or or creating a new." system that, that isn't going to work for people. Uh, I don't want to invest in your company or somebody who's considering working. You know, we, we talked with um, the team last week about uh, hiring and, and bringing on new team members, right? Like, I wonder if there's anybody out there who's had those experiences where somebody comes into an interview and says like, actually, I, I don't like what you're doing. It seems strange. Like, I, I sort of imagine like you wouldn't end up having that interview, but like, I'm curious if anybody has, like, if, if this is coming up where it's like somebody comes into an interview and it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't like what you're doing. Um, and how, yeah, how those conversations have gone. I think it's, it's easy to think of this as something that's kind of somewhere else, right? So yeah. over there. But um, I mean, if people are talking about, uh, you know, carbon removal over, over dinner mm-hmm. or, or, you know, in, in, in their other things that they do in life, like mm-hmm. I'm curious how it comes up. And, and in, in this conversation, I'm curious, kind of the negative case, because it's one thing yeah, for me to say like, hey, here's, you know, here's the cover of Wired. Like, oh my gosh, look at that carbon <laughs> removal. We did it. Um, but like, yeah, you know, where are the conversations where somebody holds this up and says like, never again or something, I don't, you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're definitely having the conversation more and more often as the news, uh, there's news that comes up every day about fossil fuels, fueling things that aren't good for our environment or for people. Uh, there, there's definitely, uh, the conversation comes up amongst family members when we, when I personally talk about carbon removal to my family and try to uh, share with them like why I do what I do. Um, so we're, we're definitely having the conversation more. And when it comes up, it's definitely, an opportunity to not only exchange information um, by educating them, but also to hear what their point of view is uh, and why they are, might be against carbon dioxide removal, because that's an opportunity right there to make a difference, to actually change someone's mind uh, and then get them on board uh, as far as what needs to be done for, uh, for CBR. So it's definitely coming up um, and we're having these conversations uh, and I just feel like they're appropriate times to be able to do, to listen to your prospect of customers, to be able to get their input so that you can make your business better. Well said, inspiring. Thank you, Dol. You're welcome. All right, I think that's it. That's Wonderful. Yeah, thank you for your time today. Yeah, this was good. Sweet.